For the last few years, the BBC has been creating an online database of archived editions of Radio Times from 1923 to 2009. Today, for the first time, the BBC will make the complete Radio Times for the 1930s available online. Details ahead. Manvin Ran has been hearing why the decade mattered. This is the BBC Home Service. I've learnt so much just from browsing the, the 1930s. Dr Amanda Wrigley is a television and radio historian at the University of Reading. But not only historians, it's exciting for everybody with an interest in Britain's social, cultural, political history. You know, whether it's cricket or theatre, gender, archaeology, unemployment, education, it's all there. Barely ten years old, as the BBC entered the 1930s, it was already part of the fabric of national life. And what a decade it was to be. This is London. You will now hear a statement by the Prime Minister. I am speaking to you from the Cabinet Room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British Ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. We learn from the Radio Times emergency issue that was printed immediately. Plans had been in place for one year leading up to the declaration. Almost immediately, all the departments dispersed from London. Variety shows went to one city, orchestras went to another, dramatic actors went elsewhere, and a new schedule was immediately in operation. There was news on the hour. We've got a long bomb run in. It's going to take us some time, and the bomb aim is ready. And here we go to drop our bombs on Berlin. And yet, the motto it used in this emergency issue of the Radio Times was broadcasting carries on, exclamation mark. And so it did. You know, there were still schools broadcast, still the children's hour, still the drama. The sense that yeah, we'll carry on is really quite strong. The Daily Times and Big Ben Chimes are Radio Times. The database has links to the original broadcasts where they're available, and you can hear the national dialogue changing as politicians and the royal family begin to speak directly to the public. A few hours ago, I discharged my last duty as king and emperor. Edward VIII, as Prince of Wales, had taken communication with the public to a new level before he became monarch. And so it was appropriate then that he should declare his abdication personally to the public by radio. I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king as I would wish to do without the help and support of the woman I love. I mean, the coronation of George VI in 1937 gave us a coronation special issue of the Radio Times. Never before has a newly crowned king been able to talk to all his peoples in their own homes on the day of his coronation. If you search for Genome on the BBC website, it will take you to the homepage. It's very simple. There are five million records, so to find what you, interests you, you've got to put in the names of uh, people, programmes, topics, or you can search by date. Whilst the 1930s archive is complete, there are still problems. The scanning process doesn't always read old print very well, so it can create errors in the text, making it harder to search for items. That's why you might find spelling mistakes, punctuation errors. Nothing a good editor couldn't fix, which is why volunteers from all over the country have been logging on to help. And you could too. 
It's a very simple process and there are instructions on the BBC Genome homepage for people who want to be part of this historic project. This is public history at its best. Manveen Rana reporting.